now let's hear from Dr. Mego himself, Paul Clark, in an exclusive interview that he granted us at Louisville Supercon. Dr. Mego, would you get, give us a little bit of background on how you became Dr. Mego and what we're looking at now with official Mego toys in the world of Star Trek? Okay. Uh, I became Dr. Mego in 1997 when I found that I wasn't the only grown man that wanted his old toys back. When the Mega Museum came out and we had a message boards and we started to talk to each other, I found that we all were missing parts, phasers, uh, belts, capes, gloves. And so I figured out how to reproduce the capes and gloves, and I learned how to mold plastic pieces using resin and silicon rubber in my garage. I couldn't do it for myself, but knowing there were other people out there who wanted it got me motivated to get it done. Uh, in 2001, I had the Migo body tooled in a factory in China. I found a factory that was willing to work in small numbers. So they were, uh, so I was able to do uh, shirts and the phasers, communicators, you know, uh, without a license. I was bootlegging. Um, and you're doing this for your passion for the dolls, is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, once you're Amigo, you know, Amigo guys get it. The Star, the G.I. Joe people, there's tons of accessories still out there, you know, because they all have pretty much the same boots. And But with Amigo, a lot of characters had very specific accessories, so they're just not out there. So there's a lot more loose figures than complete ones. And it just seemed a shame to me that the only people who could really enjoy, only some people could enjoy displaying their figures complete. Uh, then a lot of us had Batman missing a boot or, you know, a glove, and he just didn't look good. So by making replacement parts, you could fix them up so they looked good on the shelf. Um, my friend of mine, uh, Joe Senna, had uh, worked in Star Trek licensing, and he came back from L.A., moved back to New York, and he saw what I was doing with the Migos and said, you really should get a license. You, you already have everything there. I know people in the Star Trek business. Let talk to them about a license. Well, the light Diamond Select Toys had the license, so we went to them, and they said, "Yeah, we, we'll we're Mego fans. We dig it. Let's try it out. Let's see if they sell." And that's how we did the 2007-2008 Diamond Select Star Treks. Well, I brought him to Marty Abrams' house and showed him because he was involved in it, and uh, I showed him the Endorian that I made. And he said, boy, you really nailed it. I swear this came out of my factory. Uh, well, I'm good. I'm, <laughs> Marty Abrams looked at an Dorian I made and said, that looked just like the original. Uh, so we, start, I said, look, I want to just bring Mego back. I, I want this, you know, we need to come back as a company. Not, you know, like I'm making this as MC Toys. It's great, but MC is really Mego Corporation. We're in all but name, you know. And he said, I, I don't want to go backwards. Uh, I've got, you know, I, I've had a career outside Mego. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing other things. So when Toys That Made Us was doing their documentary, he called me up and said they want to talk to me about Star Trek Migos. And he says, I don't have any, I don't have anything anymore. I know you got everything. Make my living room look like your dining room. So I brought the Planet Apes Treehouse, the Bat Cave, uh, the Enterprise, the uh, motion picture figures, you know, everything I could. I loaded up, you know, we did it up. After the documentary, he said there was a major retailer interested in doing Migos. So he said, we're going to see where this goes, but we're bringing back Migo. So I'm in seventh heaven. This is just awesome. Migo is back. It's back with the guy who started it. He's we're doing Star Trek. We're going to be doing a lot of licenses, and this is awesome. So tell us about what is currently available now and how we can get official Star Trek Mego dolls. Okay, your best bet is Target.com. Okay, they there are sixty different figures out there. Not all Star Trek, but we have um, in Star Trek we did Wave One was Sulu and Chekhov. Uh, the uh, Mirror Universe 2 pack of Kirk and Spock. Um, and then Wave 2 was Gorn and the Spock, the string accurate Gorn, not the not the brown lizard head with the Klingon suit. Um, and uh, Wave 3 is Kirk and the Romulan that looks just like the Migo Romulan. And the 2 pack is 
Mirror Universe, uh, Sulu and Uhura. And Sulu has a new sculpt with the scar, et, you know, etched in as part of the sculpt, not just a little paint app on the cheek like Playmates did. <laughs> it was very important to me that we do a different head sculpt for Sulu. Uh, and and horror, you know, it, this is just the beginning. So we can oh, go right. to the store right now <laughs> and get current Star Trek figures yes. that are officially by Mego and that are licensed. Yes, yes, good. The problem with the stores is we have only about two feet of space, and what's on the shelves depends on what's in the back room and what they can bring out. So that's why I recommend Target.com. Now, you may get lucky, and you may go in and see a bunch of Star Trek figures. I just, a lot of people have expressed frustration with going to the store. I know everyone wants that store experience, and it's really cool. I went into my Target and saw Romulans on the peg, and it I was looted. awesome. I looted like a Visigoth. <laughs> <laughs> I left nothing left. <laughs> but, you know, they we made 10,000 of each. They will show up. But Star Trek fans are very committed. So I know that it'll be hard to find them. Well, we love what you're doing. Any final words? Amigo is back, baby. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long and may the force be with you. Nanu Nanu.